Hey everyone, it's Rhett Nelson here with EastIdahoNews.com. If you have been on social media at all, you may have heard of this guy, Patrick <laughs> Toussaint. He's uh, an entrepreneur, local guy in the community, but he's involved in a whole bunch of different projects. He's an empowerment coach, he helps people live their best life, yeah. and he's on a mission to just create make the world a better place. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Patrick, thanks for uh, coming down to our studio today hey. to chat with us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. To start off today, just tell people uh, who you are and what you do. Just okay. give us an introduction of who, of who you are. Okay, so my name is Patrick Toussaint, and I'm um, married. I'm a, my wife's name is Rebecca. I have eight kids, and I'm now a grandpa. I live here in Idaho Falls, and uh, sales, uh, I've been selling all my life, uh, but, um, but I've been working with a lot of people and, and helping people reach their goals. Uh, I've been, shoot, going back to high school. I mean, I was uh, captain of the basketball team and, and student body president. I just love finding, finding ways to help people in my community and in my school. So lately, um, I've been involved, well, for the last over 20 years, I've been involved with the Distinguished Young Women program. For some people, it's uh, Junior Miss. So I've been fortunate enough to have two daughters. Uh, Miko, she won Blackfoot Distinguished Young Woman and um, Idaho Distinguished Young Woman in 2014, and she placed in the top 10 in the nation in DYW. And then my daughter Mia, uh, she won uh, Blackfoot Distinguished Young Woman in 2018, and uh, she, was, uh, she was a second runner-up in the uh, state Idaho a state program. So because of that, I've, been, I've had the opportunity to judge different uh, Distinguished Women programs, and I love the whole program, the platform of Distinguished Women, and it is to be your best selves. So I've really tried to help people be their best selves. I believe that we live in a nation of mediocrity. I mean, we're settling. People are just settling for less than their potential, and I really want my, my platform, my, uh, the rest of my life devoted to, be, to helping people step out of your comfort zone and just be your best self. If you can live your best life, now you're truly living. The fun stuff happens when you step out of your comfort zone. So I really try to help people do that. And that's an interesting philosophy and you mentioned you kind of got started doing that as a young person. People would just come to you and ask you for advice or, or how, 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 did, how did you become this, this uh, empowerment guru? <laughs> guru? I don't know about guru. But, but here's my thing. Here's my thing. I, I sincerely love people. So I think my, my superpower is that I'll, I sincerely love you and I'm going to listen and I'm going to really try to help you. You know, these, these scars, I got hit by a car at age 13. I was riding a bike and didn't die. And, Age 15, I got hit by a car again, <laughs> riding another bike, and didn't die. And, and after those two experiences, I thought about, OK, why am I still alive? I didn't even break any bones. And then after the car accidents, um, I, 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 I sat down and I thought, OK, what, what God, I believe in you. What, what mission, what purpose do you have for me? And from that, it took me to graduate from high school and going to, well, back then it was Rick's College in 1990. Because I wanted to really find out why I was still alive. And yeah, the patriarchal blessing and serving an LDS mission in Houston, Texas for two years. And yeah, it, yeah that, so the, those car accidents really were pivotal, uh, was a pivotal point in my life. Because the first one, I was just like, yeah, look at me, I'm indestructible. The second one, at, at age 15, made me stop and think about, okay, why? Why am I alive? What's my, what's my purpose in life? And I found that by leaving Miami and coming to Idaho and getting a patriarchal blessing and serving a mission and yeah, living here since 1993. I've been here since then. I've been on a mission to help other people ever since. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's really, my, my best life is helping other people find uh, find out who, what their goals are and live their best lives. Tell me about, because you do a, I don't know how regular this is, you have a series of videos on YouTube yeah. where you interview people about living their best life. Yeah, yeah. Just people in the community who yeah. have accomplished different goals and different things. Yeah. Uh, recently you did a video just about you. 
and what started you on this path of living your best life? And there was an experience that happened to you six years ago where you're running the bone and back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of triggered um, this mindset of uh, stepping outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want to tell people about that? Yeah, experience? yeah. So, Alan Day, good old Alan Day. So, Alan Day calls me and he says, Hey, Patrick, my family and I are going to do the bone and back race, you want to join us? I'm like, sure, no problem. And what does that mean? Well, there, there'll be eight of us. It's, it's 20 miles up, 20 miles back. You'll get five miles. Great. So the Sunday before that Saturday, he calls me and says, hey, my family's backing out. Do you still want to do it? I said, well, sure. What does that mean? We each run 20 miles. I'm like, oh, okay. He says, well, what's the most you've run? Uh, six. So we ran 10 that Monday. I ran seven on Wednesday. Saturday morning, get up, 6, 6.30 in the morning was my start time. So I start running, and every two and a half miles, there's a, a station. So I get my water, eat my banana, and get my goo, and so I'm moving along, and I've got a good pace, and I'm like, man, this is really good, this is really good. I get to mile 15. When I get to mile 15, I get my goo and everything, and I'm running, and all of a sudden, I feel like knives are just stabbing my abs and my chest. And I'm really thinking, you gotta be kidding. I mean, intense pain. And I remember thinking, okay, what the heck is going on? So I kept running because I've just never experienced that before. Within minutes of going through that pain, it went away and I had this burst of energy and I ran faster. And I finished my part of the, my part of the race and gave Alan a high five and he went downhill 20 miles. And I remember thinking, okay, it took me four hours and seven minutes to run uphill 20 miles, but mile 15, I guess I hit the wall, the runner's wall, and I had this intense pain. But when I pushed past that, this euphoric feeling just, just en enveloped me. And I, and I thought, you know what? That's life. All of us, there's this, this, this wall that if we can just go past that, if we can, go, if we can push past the pain, past fear. If we get past that, there's this, this heavenly, this awesome, amazing experience, this growth, this, this lesson that's waiting for us. But we'll never get to that if we don't step out of our comfort zones and look fear in the face, look pain in the face. You know what? I'm feeling this right now. I don't care. I'm going to push past that because something awesome and amazing is waiting for me, but I got to go through this, this obstacle. So ever since that experience, Rhett, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to help people push past that because most people, the minute they step out and they feel some pain, they come back into their comfort zone. And they need a coach. Perfect example. So I had my birthday this Saturday. I turned 47 years old on my birthday. So everyone knows I love Spartans and I love burpees. Mm -hmm. So on my birthday, I was on Facebook Live. Hey, guys, today's my 47th birthday. I'm going to do 47 burpees. Now, I was training prior to Saturday. And the best that I can do on my own was 47 burpees in three minutes and two seconds. So I told uh, Meg, Meg Herbert, she was my little coach. And I said, Meg, I want to get it under three minutes. So help me out. She said, all right, no problem. So as I'm doing the burpees and she's shouting, shouting at me and my kids are filming me and I know I'm on Facebook Live and, you know, and, I, and I, I got rest and I, and I had my little energy thing and my little supplements. So I did all that stuff and I'm doing the burpees because of Meg and pushing me and in the moment. And I'm just like, okay, this is it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hit this goal. And I don't know what the time is, but I'm just going to go as fast as I can and just push past my pain. And if you notice, after my 33rd or 35th burpee, I'm, I started grunting. Yeah. <laughs> so I was feeling some struggle and some pain, and it was really hard. And I was just, <laughs> just grunting it out. And I'm pushing past my comfort zone doing that. Well, when I got done, Meg said, you beat your time by 39 seconds. So instead of beating my time by, um, well, just getting under three minutes, I did 47 burpees in two minutes and 21 seconds. Wow. And that's a testament of having, of the power of having someone coach you, someone push you, someone leading you and helping you to hit your goal. You can do amazing things if you have someone that's empowering you to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to be for um, everybody. Yeah. Now, we talk about empowerment, Coach. A lot of people apply that to fitness, and that's yeah. the examples you've just shared. But yeah. empowerment isn't just about getting in shape. 
There's, yeah. there's other aspects to this. What other, in what other ways have you helped people achieve their goals and get out of their, out of their comfort zone? You know, I've, I've had people just tell me, I say, okay, tell me what's your why? Tell me what you want. It's crazy and it's actually frustrating. Only 2% of our American population sets goals. Mm. 2%. So you got 90% of us just kind of, we wake up and we just kind of, we're just going to go through life and do our thing. Mm. And I start there, it's like, you know, you got to set a goal. You got to have something that you want to go for. So we start there. I, I ask people, well, what do you want? And really asking different questions to get down to the root. Because everyone says, I want to be rich, I want to be this, I want to be thin, I want to be athletic. Or, oh, okay, that, that sounds good, but tell me more about that. And once you get to a real desire, you know, I really want this. Okay, how bad do you want it? I mean, you got to pay a price. And if they're willing to pay a price, say, so you know what, I'm ready to do whatever it takes to hit my goal. Because it's going to help me, it's going to help my family, it's going it's to help so many different people. I really want to hit this goal. So if they're serious and they're committed to doing that, now we can set up steps. And my biggest superpower is, okay, once we set these steps, you're going to do it. Now there's going to be a daily accountability. I'm going to be calling you, checking in on you. Are you doing the things that you said you, commit, you, that you committed to doing? And if not, hey, all right, well, we just got to start over. No problem. And when are you gonna, what are you going to do now? Are you going to commit to me? Okay, what are you doing tomorrow? Or, or when you, you didn't do this yet so far, are you going to do it today? So my goal is to have a daily accountability. And if they fail, hey, let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's do this again. And let's make sure we do it. And if I can get them to do it straight 21 times, we all know you do something 21 times, it becomes a habit. My goal is for them to create habits of doing successful things. Because once, once you make it a habit, it's, it becomes a part of your life. So that's my big thing. Let's, let's find out what you want and let's make some action steps. And I want to help you. Well, you got to report to me. You got to tell me that you're doing it. If you're not, I'm going to catch you, and then we're going to reevaluate, and, and I'm going to, I want to make sure, I want to help you do those action steps. And a grand poobah, the, the three-point basket uh, with no time left, and you win the game, happens when you do what you said you're going to do 21 times in a row. Because if I can get you to do that, now it's, it's a part of your life, it becomes habitual, and you get to grow automatically on that one. What, what brings you the most fulfillment about helping other people? Like, um, have, you, have you gained cool relationships with people oh, yeah. in the process? What, I mean, but what is it that, uh, what is it about empowering others that, you, that, you, that, that excites you? When you see the look in someone's eyes, when they've reached their goal or surpassed their goal, it's priceless because they've changed. They're no longer the same person. There's a saying that says, once you, once you have an idea that changes your mind, that enhances your, your, your frame of reference on, on, on a specific topic, you never go back to the same frame of thought. You just, you're a new person. You, you think differently. And if you think differently, you'll act differently. So yeah, it's seeing somebody succeed in something that they were struggling with or I was able to help them, re a goal that they had a hard time getting to, but I helped them get there, they changed once they hit that goal. Because now, you're like, okay, I did that, what else can I do? And if I can get somebody thinking like that, yeah, it's, they're a different person. And it, it boils down to confidence. It's amazing. Fear runs, I wanna say 99% of people's lives. I mean, people are just scared. But if I, can get people to, if I can get somebody to become confident in what they're doing, even if they've never done something before, you can be confident in trying. If you, if that, if you can have that confidence to where you're, you attack a problem, because we all got problems, but attacking, a pro, uh, but attacking a problem and coming up with a solution and being relentless, being like, you know what, no matter what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this, I'm going to find a solution to this, and I'm, I'm just gonna, just, I'm gonna give it my all to make sure I can uh, accomplish this goal or, or, fix, or solve this problem. If someone can be confident enough in themselves to do that, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that confidence, it, because I believe that if, if you're confident in yourself, you can do anything. I mean, I, there's a ton of things that I can't do, but by golly, if I'm gonna try something, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give my all. 
But guess what? You give me enough chances, I'll get good at it. Because mm-hmm. it's just my, my frame of mind. You know, there's an there's a interesting analogy that I read recently, and you may have heard this analogy. Um, uh, it's called the crab analogy. If you put a bunch of crabs in a bowl yeah. and one starts to climb, all the other crabs will pull that, that climbing crab down. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the analogy is all about success. Anyone who tries to go and be successful in their life, there's always people in their life to drag them down. Have yeah. you encountered that as you strive to, to, to pursue this? You know, I'm going to give props to my wife. I love my wife. I love you, Rebecca. I love my wife. She's allowed me to be me. She's allowed me to do my thing. And I've had different, I've been involved in different groups where we're trying to attain a goal and, and I'm competing with other groups. And I've, I've seen where obviously it's a competition. Well, I don't want Pat, we don't want Patrick to win, so let, what can we do to, to either beat him or slow him down? I've been involved in that. And it, it's funny, I found that because I have so many different connections or so many different friends or so many different people that I've been helping, um, I, my support team is just tremendous. So if I did feel like someone was trying to pull me down, I've got so many people that are cheering me on that want me to succeed that it's not really significant. It's just not, mm. it, it's not even a, a thing for me. And, but as you talked about, you're the embodiment of this. I mean, as you strive to help other people, you also strive to live it with your burpee example and yeah. your example with the running the relay. And from that, Multiple other opportunities have come up. You mentioned oh, yeah. the TED Talk. Yeah. You're going to be uh, doing Idol, uh, dancing with the Idol Paul Stars yeah, here yeah, in a few yeah. weeks. Yeah. You're involved with uh, your emceeing, or you're a judge for the Distinguished Young Women yeah, yeah. program with, with multiple schools in the area. Yeah, yeah. So uh, opportunity comes your yeah. way. I believe in the law of attraction. I believe that we are this big human magnet. And I believe that if you're striving to do good and you're striving to step out of your comfort zone and you're trying to grow, you're just going to attract all this good stuff. I mean, yeah, you're going to have trials because that's how you grow. But I, I just really believe, Rhett, that if you're, if you're in the pursuit of something that's awesome and you're helping so many people, the key is helping people. If you're involved in helping so many people, you're going to just get good things that, to come your way. Hmm. So what is, what is your goal? Uh, what kind of things are you striving to do personally? What are you passionate about? I attended this thing called Millionaire Mind two different times. MMI, Millionaire Mind Intensive in, in Salt Lake. And it was a great experience. I, I advise everyone to go and try that out. One of the speakers there said, if you want to make a lot of money, you got to help a lot of people. I said, okay, I like that. All right. He says, you want to make a lot of money, you got to solve a lot of problems. Okay. So I'm, I've sold out to those two, two different concepts. If I help a ton of people, I'll be taken care of, especially financially. And, and really, financial is kind of like a small part of it because it's just more rewarding to affect somebody's life in a positive way. I said this before. Think about it. Let's say I really help just 100 people. To, to live their best lives, and now they're doing some things, they're, they're confident in themselves, and they're just, they're stepping out of their comfort zones and they're growing. That's a hundred lives that have affected, and it is going to spiral over into affecting their kids' lives and other people's lives. So it's this big ripple effect. Once I do that with just a hundred people, for example, boom, I die. The Patrick thing will continue to grow. It'll continue to spread. So I become immortal. So the more people I help, the more I'm influencing hundreds and thousands and millions of people, the whole Patrick thing will keep going on even after I'm gone from this crazy world. So yeah, so that's, that's, that's my, my, my goal, my dream, because it's helping people will open the door for so many other awesome opportunities. And really, at the end of your life, I mean, you're not going to think about, oh, how many hours did I spend in the office? How much money is my bank account? You want to think about your relationship with your wife and your kids, and did I really influence people for good? Hmm. So I'm, I'm, at, I'm at that point in my life where that's 
what's really important. The other things will fall into place, it'll take care of itself. Anything financial, yeah, that'll work out. But it's the people, it's the people and, and their families and the people that they're gonna meet because of an idea or a feeling that I helped them to feel, that they're like, man, Patrick, thank you. And they walk away from me as a better person, yeah, yeah. The average everyday person that's watching this right now um, who wants to achieve something in their life, yeah. wants to be successful in whatever that means to them, yeah. what's your advice to them? What would you say? Sit down with a pen and paper, ask yourself, okay, what is it that I really want? I mean, what do I really want? And whatever comes to your mind, write it down. And then narrow it down to um, uh, long, long-term goal, mid, mid-term goal, short-term goal. And then go for it. Like I said earlier, only 2% of our population sets goals. Being successful is not this impossible thing. Because really, Earl Nightingale said, the, defini the definition of success is the pursuit of a worthy goal or ideal. He didn't say the attainment of a goal or ideal. He said the pursuit. So if you set a goal and you're going for it and you're doing your best, you're, you're tracking, okay, you know what? I wanna lose 20 pounds. Hey, I lost one pound. Oh, I gained two pounds back. Oh, I lost three pounds. If you're just keeping track of it and you're keeping track of what you're doing to lose the weight, for, an, for example, you're winning, you're succeeding, but man, I hate mediocrity. <laughs> I just hate mediocrity. I just don't believe in mediocrity. We got to get rid of mediocrity. And the easiest way to get, get rid of mediocrity is to start by setting, writing down a goal and then looking at it. Get your mission statement. Today, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I've been coaching this good friend of mine. He's paying me to coach him. And his mission statement that he tells me every day is, I'm a healthy person. He says that. He sends me the text, he, he says it over the phone, I'm a healthy person. And he told me after a month of that, he says, hey Pat, I've had a hard time kicking pop. But you know what, right when I'm about to drink pop, I think about what I say all the time, I'm a healthy person. And I push it away. So now it's been a month, he hasn't drank pop for a month, and that's a big deal for him. But now he's empowered, remember, 21 days. Yeah. Now he's empowered to where the pop isn't, a, isn't an issue anymore. So there's, there's power in having a mission statement, but you got to start. My advice is to sit down, ask yourself, find out what you want. Ask yourself that question, and then whatever ideas pop in your mind, write that down, and then work on that, and then boil it down to a long-term goal, a mid-term goal, and a short-term goal, and then go for it. Mm. And, and don't, don't expect overnight success. I mean, you just, you just want to take it one step at a time. Work at it. Yeah, just, just little things. Pursue it. It's amazing. Find joy in the journey. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Because the journey's where the rush is. I've, I've reached different goals, and it's interesting, Rhett. I hit the goal, I'm like, wow, I don't really feel this excitement. In fact, and all of those, and everyone that's reached their goals, they can attest to this. When you reach a goal, for me, I have this feeling of calm this feeling of accomplishment. It's, I've never jumped up in the air like, yeah, I did it. It's just this feeling like, okay, wow, I did that. And this just feeling of peace in the sense of like, wow, I accomplished that. This is a cool feeling. I've never jumped up and down and screamed and shouted when I've reached a goal. I've always just been like, wow, wow, I did it. And you just have this calm feeling. And that tells me that I've become that person to be able to reach that goal. So now I'm ready to set a higher goal, a harder goal, and go and, and reach that. So it's the journey. Now hoot and holler as they get closer and closer to it. But I'm telling you, when you get that, when you reach it, it's just, it's just this calm, cool feeling. So um, I, the journey is more fun than reaching the goal, in my opinion. Mm. Well, Patrick, thanks for coming down today. It's been a fascinating conversation. Hey, you're welcome. If you want to uh, follow Patrick and get the latest on what he's doing in the community or how you can watch some of his videos, his Facebook page, that kind of thing, yeah. uh, it's facebook.com slash ptyourbestlife. Yeah, is that correct? yeah, that's correct. Life. Yes, we'll put yeah. the link to that below this video. 
And uh, thanks for watching this video. You guys have a great week.